Hi, welcome to Born Calling. Today is uh, Wednesday, February 17th. And, and how our show works is that I've got two special guests tonight who will answer questions for you. you. You have the opportunity to call in. Our, our number is 759-6763, and it will be on the screen. Diane is a scribe, and, and she takes your message. And uh, she'll bring the question to me, and I'll present it to them as the show goes on. I have tonight Robert Dwyer, Dr. Bob, and, and Dr. Bob Dwyer. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm mean, my brother Tom, and, and Tom has a lot of the government background, and Mr. Dwyer is, is a scientist from Woods Hole with a, a huge background in, in coastal issues and nutrient loading and everything related to it. So I'm going to kind of turn it over to them. I'll be here. If Diane gets a phone call, you know, call in, and, and we'll get, to, get the question to them. If the phone, if this show is running late and you have a question, call in and we'll get back to you tomorrow. Diane will take the question, we'll find an answer, and we'll call you back tomorrow. Okay, thank you. So, without okay. further ado, Bob. Great. Skip, thanks for inviting me. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, and uh, you invited me because I had uh, uh, made some comments in, in public about the, uh, the proposal that's been uh, kind of put forward by the Buzzards Bay Coalition for uh, a relocation of the discharge from the Wareham Wastewater Treatment Plant into the canal at the location that the Academy uh, currently discharges its small 70,000 gallon a day wastewater flow. Uh, and they had paid for a, a comprehensive modeling analysis of the hydraulics or the hydrodynamics of where the uh, wastewater would go, basically how it would dilute in the canal. and. Uh, my initial comments on that were that I thought the uh, modeling analysis and the hydrodynamics was good as far as it went at looking at initial dilution of the water coming out, but it missed a couple of important points. Uh, first, it considered uh, nitrogen, which is, which is one of the more problematic uh, pollutants in the, uh, in the effluent, to be inert or conservative. In other words, uh, a molecule of nitrogen uh, put into the wastewater uh, would, uh, would dilute and then would flow out of the bay and flow over the continental shelf never to be seen again. The real difficulty with that that I had right away is that uh, nitrogen isn't inert. It's a very bioactive uh, fertilizer. Everybody uses nitrogen of various forms as fertilizer on their lawns and in their gardens and it's great at growing plants. And in Buzzards Bay what it would do is grow algae. Um, the other concern I had was that other constituents that in, are in the wastewater are similarly uh, not conservative. There are going to be some concentrations of suspended solids that necessarily come out of every wastewater flow. Uh, suspended solids at some point aren't suspended. They settle down onto the bottom when the flow slows down, like in all of the side bays off the main channel of the canal. And my third concern was that the wastewater is going to uh, include a number of other uh, constituents that aren't even regulated right now. Uh, there's a whole plethora of what they call emerging contaminants, uh, contaminants of emerging concern uh, that, that aren't even uh, uh, regulated by EPA. There's no safe levels that have been established as water quality criteria. Uh, and some of these substances uh, tend to be uh, preferentially to bind to uh, animal tissues and organic matter. So are they going to bind to the organic matter in the sediments? Are they going to bind to the tissues on shellfish? Um, these are all questions that uh, the Buzzards Bay Coalition analysis didn't get into. Um, so they've only uh, done the first step at looking at this. And my, my other concern is that this seemed to be a little bit of a cart before the horse type of a, a situation where uh, they've looked in detail or started to look in detail at this analysis. Uh, and I understand the reasons for that, but there are maybe many, many other alternatives uh, in, to manage the, uh, the wastewater, both from that flow 
and from all the other sources that are around uh, Buzzards Bay. And it really needs to be looked at at a comprehensive kind of uh, watershed-wide analysis on both sides of the bay, including Buzzards Bay on this side and the towns and the, uh, the counties perhaps on the other side. And I just didn't see that as far as they've gone so far. And I, my warning, uh, it was a caution, not a warning, to the, uh, to the Board of Sewer Commissioners was that uh, uh, this is the beginning of a, perhaps a five-year plan and this is the time that those questions ought to be addressed. Because once they make a decision, um, it's a forever decision. Basically, it's uh, a new uh, outfall there is going to last for at least 100 years. And there's, no, there's really no going back after you've spent 20, 30, 40 million dollars on it among all the towns. Yeah, so, Tom. Um, town of Bourne and Town of Wayham took different approaches towards growth, which is the driving factor for uh, sewering and, and wastewater expansion. Uh, back in 1987, uh, Town of Bourne made a, a monumental decision. Uh, it went from one half acre zoning to one acre zoning. And that was to tell all developers it was a tremendous push for development at that time. In fact, uh, because Sandwich and Mashby didn't take that type of action where we doubled the size of our zoning, they became number one and number two in the next 10 years of development. Their population just skyrocketed. But we took the approach that uh, we did not want to develop and grow uh, into 40 or 50,000 uh, population as a community. Uh, and so that, that kept our growth down. So we didn't have the type of growth other communities experienced. Uh, Wareham, they have 18 mobile home parks. They have extensive uh, buildup around uh, Swifts Beach, Cremeset, uh, along the shoreline. And they needed sewering. They needed it desperately, and um, th they went forward, and, and they're in a situation now that they're they're desperate again. They they have uh, two million c capacity, but they're only allowed to go up to eighty percent. So it's I think it's one point five six million gallons, and uh, they can't they can't take any more. So. Uh, they're looking for a solution because they're encouraging growth. Um, Makepeace, who's the largest developer uh, in Massachusetts and is the largest landowner, uh, is looking to uh, not only in, in Wayham but also in Carver. They have all this land and, and uh, they want to develop it and they have a right to develop it. Uh, so uh, Wayham is looking for a solution to uh, expansion at their site. and. Uh, EPA is and Mass DEP is saying no, you can't, you can't uh, go anymore. So that's what's triggering the need to uh, find an alternative. Um, uh, the alternative of going to to Mass Maritime is is not a, a good solution for Taylor's Point or uh, Great Gables or Wings Neck. Uh, the whole embayment over there, you know, is, is going to be impacted, and uh, the coalition's hoping that it isn't making another part of the bay worse <coughs> than the Agawam River. But uh, I think we're very concerned about that impact, and uh, many people are speaking up. Uh, different groups are, are, are going to uh, send letters to DP, EPA. Um, and, and, you know, be strongly against this, this uh, possibility. So, um, but I, I, I think Wareham, you know, needs to look at other alternatives. And uh, like Dr. Bob said, it's not limited to one town. It's, it's all the uh, plants on the embayment. Now, uh, New Bedford's at 30 million gallons per day. Uh, Fayhaven discharges, I believe, four million, and Dartmouth at five million. There's a lot of uh, wastewater going into the bay right now, so uh, it has to be looked at a, a, at a bay-wide analysis. And uh, Dr. Bob had talked earlier about Chesapeake 
Bay and, and what they did. Well, when we started uh, Buzzards Bay Project in 1985, that was our model, was the Chesapeake Bay Project, and that we wanted to incorporate uh, their modeling techniques into the Buzzards Bay Management Preservation and Protection uh, document. So hopefully uh, we will get to where we want to go. Okay, thank you. Um, could, could you give me an idea what alternatives may exist other than than ocean outfall? Well, there are a number, and I'm, I, I don't pretend to be a wastewater treatment expert, I, I but, uh, but uh, there are um, uh, groundwater infiltration uh, possibilities. Um, again, part of this is, is limited in size. Some of these are, would necessarily have to be smaller plants. Um, there are other alternatives. Uh, there are uh, uh, advanced wastewater, advanced uh, septic systems that denitrify. Uh, this would have to be done on a household by household basis, but might be practical in, in smaller areas. Uh, the Buzzard Bay Coalition right now has a, uh, they have a new, just got a grant where they're going to be testing some of these around uh, uh, West Falmouth Harbor, I think. Um, those are some of the possibilities. The, uh, um, there are other ad advanced wastewater uh, treatment processes that are in place, for instance, to remove uh, fluorinated, perfluorinated alkyl substances, P PFAS substances, so to speak. Um, we're dealing with that right now in Bourne from a spill of uh, fire, well, it's a, it was an oil spill where they applied firefighting foam at the Otis Rotary, and that is now migrating down into uh, Hen Cove. But uh, that firefighting foam was extensively used on the base, and there are two or three different alternatives. Uh, the uh, chemical engineering department at URI is looking at an advanced treatment process to pump the groundwater up that's contaminated, remove that material, and then uh, inject it back in to maintain the uh, kind of the dome of uh, water that we all depend on for drinking water over here. Mm -hmm. um, uh, again, right now, my, my real concern is uh, this may be uh, a viable alternative uh, against a number of other alternatives, but none of those alternatives have been looked at yet. And I think it, it behooves the town, and the town is going to be the receiving water for this outfall if, uh, if this goes forward, um, to, uh, to ask the regulatory authorities to, uh, to investigate this further. This could be uh, uh, Mass DEP, it could be the US EPA, uh, but uh, these are questions that can't go unanswered. Um, for the assimilation capacity of the bay really hasn't been established and frankly if you if you don't try to predict it beforehand you won't know you have a problem until you've exceeded it and then by then it's too late yeah, yeah and, and just to bring everybody up to date a little bit we we do have an alternative testing facility that's run by the county which is out the base right on and it runs off their sewer system and they test alternative sewer systems right there but they're not being tested on site on the edge of the bay they're being tested there and this has been going on for I'm going to say 25 years and local boards of health consult with them on, on what how, how some of these systems are working what are better what are worse some might fail but you learn and that's how you have to do it and you're tied into the wastewater system for the base so they have a steady stream of wastewater to test these facilities and, Okay, Tom. Call in. Hi, Diane. This is Kathy. We've got a call. I'll give you a minute. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Who is the Buzzard Bay Coalition? They can hang this over us. And people know that there's a disaster. So, Tom, you'll get a question in a moment. But. What do you know about the alternatives? Have you had much experience with them at all? Alternatives to say wastewater, ocean outfall, other than groundwater discharge? The o Otis yeah. themselves. They ran it seven miles over and they did a groundwater discharge. I mean, yeah. And they're only at 700,000. Yeah. Diane has wonderful penmanship, so we're going to be fine, you know, writing us a note. Oh, 
On another note, I want to thank everybody for tuning in, and don't be afraid to call in and ask questions. There's no stupid questions. All questions are very important. Do, do and uh, if, if you have a question, and you Diane is writing it down now. Yeah. yeah. All, all questions are important, and you'd be surprised that what you may be thinking, how it can impact this discussion. So don't be afraid to call and ask. And uh, I'll be right back with you. Here we go. This whole process is going to continue to be a learning experience for everybody. It for, is. For it the is, voters, you know, for the towns, et cetera. It's going to take a while. So this is Kathy Alfonso. And who is the Buzzers Bay Coalition? And what are they doing with this project proposal? So what she's asking is, what, what is this group? And, and how do they happen to have this proposal? Because this is a Wareham Mass Maritime deal. So could you explain how it gets in the middle there? So, so what happened uh, back in 85, we decided to go down this process of, of emulating uh, the Chesapeake Bay project. And uh, in doing that, there was three organizations. It was the Buzzards Bay project, which were the scientists. And that was uh, Dr. Joseph Costa, who led that group. Uh, there was Mimi McConnell, who was the Buzzards Bay Coalition. And then uh, there was Ted Pratt from the cities and towns leading the BBAC, which was the Buzzards Bay Advisory Group. And um, the coalition is the citizen activists. They are supposed to uh, seek public support uh, for the uh, governmental entities that wanted to make the changes in their communities. And uh, the Buzz Bay Project, uh, the scientist gave the, uh, uh, the models and the uh, suggested uh, bylaws and uh, change in regulations to say stormwater management to the DPW departments, how we should change instead of directly throwing oil, gas, and uh, fecal coliform right into the waters because it was the cheapest way to do it, that we should probably use catch basins and uh, treat the stormwater prior to going in the bay. So uh, anyway, the coalition has grown. Uh, they are a large nonprofit. Uh, they're located in uh, New Bedford. And they recently uh, purchased uh, the bathhouses over in uh, Onset, which is part of Wareham. And they put $5.3 million from their donors to redo this project. So I, when they made that presentation the other night, uh, sitting on you know regulatory boards and uh, Cape Cod Commission and Bourne Planning Board, or it's, when you introduce yourself and you make a presentation, you, you tell your relationships to all parties, just full disclosure. And uh, Buzz Bay Project ch chose not to do that and saying that they just signed a 99-year lease and uh, that the landlord and they have a financial relationship ongoing with the town of Wareham. So this is really, uh, this is the town of Wareham uh, leading this charge with the front man being the Buzzards Bay Coalition. Uh, as I said before, they're, they're in a difficult situation because they want growth. They want to increase their tax base. They, they look at this as an opportunity just like we the did. The town of Wareham does, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, town of Wareham looks at this as a money-making opportunity. Uh, we took trash. We decided we'd be a regional disposal trash facility and we take trash from, from the region. Wareham would like to be a regional uh, facility for uh, sewage. Uh, the last, they were always a secondary uh, plant uh, up until the last, uh, last time that they ha had to upgrade. And uh, it's every five years you have to get a new permit. And what EPA DEP said was you had to go from secondary treatment to tertiary treatment. So, and they did that, and the town of Bourne paid their 18% towards that as well. Uh, so, And the town sends 100,000 gallons a day to the uh, we, we, we We contracted 200,000 back in uh, 1991, but we never uh, actually used that much. We were about 140,000 gallons 
for Dave. And this comes from Buzzards Bay primarily comes and heads in that primarily direction. Primarily Hideaway, Main Street, Buzzards Bay, and then uh, con yeah, contracts around. Uh, so it's really three separate contracts, but in entirely it, it's uh, uh, Buzzards Bay. And so when we wanted, so anyway, the coalition is just is is been put, putting this forward for four or five years, but they're doing it on behalf of the town of Wareham. The town of Wareham, just like us, uh, looking for revenue. I mean, it's it's simple as that. And they have uh, this facility that you know the feds and the states paid. We had the same opportunity in uh, 1973, and we chose not to build the facility. Uh, so, you know. How we go forward, uh, we are partners, and uh, we're the minor partner. You know, we're, we're you know, at, at uh, 84, and we're like 16 or 17. So it's something that we're going to pay for no matter what decision is made here. Uh, Born sewer commissioners and Wareham sewer commissioners, it's, 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 it's a simple decision in the sense that it's always less expensive to throw the, whether it's sewerage, you know, wastewater, tertiary treated, or your stormwater, throw it into the bay. Hopefully it'll go away and not bother you again. But, uh, you know, that's not the best way of handling that. And they know it, we know it, uh, but it costs money. It's gonna cost more money. and. Uh, that's what everybody's struggling with, is uh, how are we going to pay for future costs if we don't do this? Yeah. We don't take the water and discharge it in the bay. I, I do think that, you know, and you guys are both numbers guys, I know you are. The proposal that was put forward, Mass Maritime. No Maritime, numbers on it. Mass Maritime <laughs> currently dumps, is allowed to discharge up to, 77,000 gallons a day. They currently take between nine and 10 million gallons of water from the Buzzers Bay Water District. So that's what they're processing and putting into the bay per year. Per year, they're putting in approximately 10 million gallons. If you take the figures given to the town by the Buzzers Bay Coalition, they'd like to put in three to 10 million gallons a day. Well, if you just said, okay, 5 million gallons, 5 million gallons times 365, that's over a billion. Then they're going to take 95% of the nutrients out of it. So what is 5% of over a billion? It's coming down to about 91 million. So you're going from a daily disposal of 77,000 a yearly of eight million, you're going to increase it to approximately 91 million. That's a big jump from 10 million to 91 million. That's that's nine times. That's a huge increase. How much do you feel there'd be any impact from that? The, in fact, the flow is going to increase tremendously, and it's going to be primarily fresh water. So it's it'll be uh, much more concentrated too with soaps and bleaches. Well, it'll have the whole suite of pharmaceuticals and household care products and, and PFAS, which is in absolutely everything from dental floss mm -hmm. to, uh, to uh, dryer sheets. Uh, they're going to, uh, that material will all be there. Some of it will be treated, taken out by activated carbon, et cetera, at the plant. Maybe some of it won't. We don't know what that treatment uh, efficiency is going to be. I must say that... Uh, you know, the Buzzards Bay Coalition has done a, a good job and they've identified that there is a problem in the Agawam River. Okay, this is a big plant discharging into a little freshwater stream. And uh, as the plant got bigger, uh, the stream uh, basically got overloaded and accumulative problems have shown up over and over again. And, and the Buzzards Bay Coalition have done a great job in recognizing that. And going, to, going from secondary treatment, which only uh, basically uh, kills bacteria and it, uh, uh, it converts ammonia and, uh, and other BOD, biological oxygen demand, it, uh, it consumes what can be consumed so it doesn't uh, decrease oxygen immediately. Uh, to go from there to tertiary treatment, which will knock the, uh, the nitrogen concentration down to uh, 
three milligrams per liter. Yeah. To give you an example, uh, the, the 77,000 gallon a day flow from the academy right now through the existing outfall is 77,000 gallons at uh, 100 milligrams per liter. And you, um, I won't do the math out, but the, uh, the new flow could be up to three million gallons at three milligrams per liter. Uh, in total, they're going to re be removing a lot of nitrogen, including a, a, a lot of it that's going into septic systems and old cesspools that are around uh, the new areas they're talking about around uh, on sewered parts around Buttermilk Bay and other parts of Wareham, et cetera. Um, but again, that's a big flow going into a very uh, uh, a concentrated area. And what doesn't get dispersed by the high flow in the canal is going to end up in the side areas and it's going to accumulate. That's my fear. The, the other thing that they didn't uh, talk about was that uh, we were, you know, required to the last permit to upgrade to tertiary. And I don't see how MMA, you know, when they re-permit, that, that they're not going to be required to go to tertiary treatment. So the treatment that we're talking about at the mass military, which is negligible, you're talking 77,000, uh, they, they're going to be taken care of by mass DEP and EPA anyway. And I think it's going to be a, a you know, huge impact for the other three facilities as well when, you know, uh, that when they go to re-permit, they're going to be looking at upgrades, uh, which will have you know, far more impact because they, they put in far more uh, fluent. I mean, it's 30, 30 it's almost uh, it's 39 million gallons per day down the other end of the bay that's being discharged. That's significant. <laughs> it is. Tom, my understanding is that the academy is going to abandon their wastewater plant or, or uh, make it a, 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 a preliminary plant and then send the wastewater over to Wareham to be treated and then it comes that, back to the big outfall. That, well that, that's their desire, but uh, the, the plant has to process it. We're talking almost 10 years in the future and that permit's only good for five years. So uh, just like you know, if, if Born and Wareham knew that they were going to say uh, no more discharge uh, increase of the Agawam River, uh, they would have walked away from the, the secondary treatment and went to groundwater disposal instead of spending the money on tertiary treatment. I mean, so mm. a lot of this is done by the regulatory agencies. They set the pace for the cities and towns as to you know what they're going to be required Amen. to do. I, I do have a question, but I don't believe you're going to be able to answer it. Um, a man named Paul is called. He'd like to know the size of the pipe on the outflow now and what it would increase to to handle the larger flow. And, and actually right now there's two outfalls at Mass Maritime. There's two permitted outfalls. One is for the swimming pool, which is 10,000 10, gallons, and they change that maybe a couple of times a year. I believe that's the number. I could be wrong. It might be 20,000, and they do it a couple of times a year or more. But that, that's a separate outfall, and they have to report that in with everything else. And then of course, they have the outfall for their existing plant, which would handle the, let's say, 10 million gallons right now is what it's handling. I, I think, and this is just think, I've seen that pipe once. I think it was around three foot in diameter, but it doesn't mean it's three feet come out in one shot. That, that's, that's the diameter of the pipe I believe I've seen, and I could be way off. Do you have any ideas? Typically on a discharge like that, the, the uh, EPA or the state will require it to, to discharge at a velocity of uh, 3 meters per second, 10 feet per second. So you need that in order to get, you've seen the kinds of turbulence that yeah. you get. Uh, you need that to mix it in. Um, and that, I, I think the, uh, uh, for instance, the thermal outfalls for the uh, sandwich power plant in the bottom are, um, are 3 meters per second. Um, and that's a typical design criteria that EPA yeah. has. So you have that to have it so you don't have any buildup of growth that would block the pipe. Well, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so that's going to be a fairly substantial pipe. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to have to wrap it up, guys. I really appreciate you coming. Thank you for all your input. Both of you, has, it's been a big help. And, and I do want to say that our next show, which will be in two weeks, we're going to try to do it on the machine gun range out the base. So not that we're trying to get away from this, but we can only do certain.